project was bold. Exciting. Extreme. The hardest thing for me was staying awake and staying sane. We were going to make this film no matter what. We were analysing stories, things like Buried, um, that, you know, a contained location. Buried was in, just in a coffin, but it was still a tight, exhilarating story that was, you know, interesting to watch. Before this movie became Forbidden Ground, before this project became Forbidden Ground, Johan and I had met to discuss doing something. And so there were other movies that were sort of floating in the ether. And then he suggested, well, why don't we do this? I've got this other idea as well. I've been sort of formulating this plan. But it, it didn't necessarily have to be a war film. It just turned out that, that making a story about a group of guys uh, stuck in a place that they had to get out of um, was probably a good way to go. So we knew that if we contained, you know, the story to say no man's land, one one small area, you know, then we could we could maybe do a drama that unfolded within that area and keep excitement going. Um, unfortunately, it grew and it grew and as the story developed we dug trenches and we had a big battle charge and a, and a, you know, a 10 minute battle sequence <laughs> much to uh, our producer's dismay. Johan sold me on the idea of this World War One film about mateship on the battlefield, about three men stuck in no man's land and uh, it, you know, it's a, it was a really nice concept and I, I really really liked the idea. He belted it out really quickly um, and conventional wisdom sort of says you need to take like six months to a year to belt out a really solid script and it came out in I think just over a month and um, it was it was really satisfactory and I thought I read it and I said great this is this is this would be great and you know for me it was it was analyzing what um, what resources we had so we were resource rich but we were capital poor you know I, I own an armory company and the pyrotechnics company so we, we've got special effects and things all covered up I own the post-production company, so we had post covered. What we didn't have was money, or well, not a lot of it anyway, certainly not enough to do a, uh, a, a war film. What made this film possible is the team behind me. There, there were so many people that, you know, without, this would have fallen apart. So I, I, I'm just blessed to have had such a good team who all believed in the story and, and what we could achieve. I think we got really lucky with our cast choice. Um, Tim and Marty were just so, so great to work with. And ideally when we were casting, that's what we were looking for. We wanted you know, a situation where the three of us got on like brothers. And we really did. You know, We would sing and laugh and carry on and tell stories. And we became great mates, fantastic comrades. And, and I think the film really benefits from that. You can see that we have a, a true mateship. If your cast is wrong, then you, you don't get that. You know, if you're not mates well before shooting and long afterwards, I think you can tell. And you know, these guys are just fantastic. One of the first things we needed to do was find a property. And ideally, we wanted a property that we, environmentally, we weren't going to have a huge impact on because this is a war film. We ended up looking in the more regional areas around um, some of the properties. We had some contacts in Dubbo. We found a gentleman who owned several properties in the, re in the area. I'm sure the, uh, the farmer who gave us his property didn't really expect us to blast it to kingdom come. <laughs> The property owner was more than happy to let us create a battlefield. <laughs> we'd go up to Dubbo for, uh, we would go up there every weekend for weeks on end and just hammer away at building this set. So we would have it, we'd build it at one point, we'd have a sort of, we'd have a, the general shape excavated. And we had to do that probably two or three times because we 
unexpectedly these they, they would flood and we would we wouldn't be able to use that particular iteration of it. Eventually, we found a place that was able to sustain, uh, you know, to keep it keep itself dry. You know, we were there. We were digging the trenches. We had the big backhoes and cadoes digging these trenches, and then by hand we had to make them authentic. You know, the cado itself put large teeth mark on the sides of the trenches. So you could tell it was machine dug. We had to then go in with spades and chisels and, and clean that up like, like it was really dug by hand. And that took weeks and weeks. Then came the set dressing, the filling the sandbags. That was all for us part of pre. And, and for me, that was the most challenging thing. Um, you know, creating those, those sets. We didn't really have the money to pay a whole set designing team to go and do it. So it was down to us. And then I think it was the, day, the night before or the, the, a day or so before, the whole set got blanketed in a, in a rainstorm, a really intense rainstorm. And we were a little bit worried, but when we returned to it in the morning it, and we'd done a little bit of restoration and, and reconstruction, it was good because it gave it that extra level of lived-in texture that we, that we hadn't been able to capture as well as it had been now. Now it had been like we'd built it, nature had collapsed it and then we had to rebuild it again and that's exactly what these guys were dealing with in the real the real trenches and there was a great feeling of satisfaction at the end because we you know we built this ourselves and to receive the praise that we did from our production designer chris boss uh, he commented that these were some of the most authentic trenches he'd ever seen uh, it was, you know, it was a great feeling, it really was. Conceivably, need to actually move this stuff off. Yeah. Here, because it might get in shot. Because we're using quite quite a wide lens. It's Hello. Hello. Yeah. How's it going? It's all right. <laughs> no, my question is, do we go completely across yeah. the line? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You do it in, in one movement. Yeah. yeah. It's it's quite quite it. If we use it, we should have to show it. That's all. And just move the track around, guys. Just so because it's a close up, we need the line. Yeah, which line is it? What's the actual one? Um, I can't. You help that lady from Wessex. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Yep. And action. I'm sorry, this is a little bit of a kind of. Okay. I think we just need to pull that focus sooner. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool. Let's, let's just grab cool. let's just grab another and then we can then we can. Rock and roll. Okay, quiet please, going for a take. Turn over. Cameras rolling, cameras. Soups. Tell us safe. And action. Let the Brady Bunch light over here. Yeah, no, it's great. Yes, okay. <laughs> Sitting in the time. Although this is now here. Yeah, we've got a shadow on the wall. We've got wall. a shadow on the wall now, Glenn. Is it over there? Yeah, on the other side. This? Yeah. yeah, that's it. Right, okay. Thank you. They need, the tea. they need it for the tea and they need it for the picture. Now there's a light in there but it'll disappear and it's in um, two by three, five space. Can you see it down there, left? Yes, one. Great, good. Just get a freak out. And action. Let's just try to make sure that we, we, we try to keep your eye on the same plane as possible. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's good. That's, good. that's good. that yeah. reveal of the insignia justifies the. It's a bit of new information. Okay, back to ones, guys. Let's go for it. <coughs> Yeah, let's grab that. Okay, same lens. And action. Yeah. Yeah. It's been amazing and um, quite emotional. Big, big drama, so it'd be interesting to yeah. see how it translates. <laughs> it was very, very heavy scene yesterday. Took a lot out of us. Danae and I were exhausted. Um, so I think that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, the end. Do you want me to grab the director of sheet? No. No? No. I just need wax. And action. Walking through my trench like a scary mofo. <laughs> All of my boys in the hood move aside and fill my heart with pride. Yo, Capitan! Okay. What the fuck, man? Every gangster. <laughs>
action. Come on! We haven't got all day! Alright lads, gather him up. Make a hole, come on! Make a way! My bad, Nothing. sorry. Reset it, please! Um, I don't think it worked, Harry. Can we try that again? <laughs> So like uh, so the first one's like yeah. move boom yeah. and, and then like yeah. and yeah. 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 I'll just kind of like crash into this thing yeah. for the purposes of you walking. Oh. Yep. Yeah. On the count of three, all right? Three. Move it. Blast. Come on, man. Just run. Don't look back. Blast. Go cool. cut. Got it, man. That's it. Yeah. I like the shadow. Yeah. Cool. Happy with that. Moving on. All right. Yeah. 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 Refreshing. <laughs> it was actually hot before, now I'm cool. <laughs> Are you happy with that hole? <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with the hole. I'm happy with the uh, stunt. The stunt guy's got great timing on that. It, uh, from what my perspective, it looks good. Thumbs up. Looked awesome. Good. How's it feel, man? <laughs> still. Oh, I lived. <laughs> I'm going, hey, come on. Star treatment. Take a take a look at this bog. Just have a little look at it. Are you now? Yeah. You need to come up. 
I would like I to inform you that this is the most pleasant fog that we've been this in in this entire shoot. <laughs> Compared to the last couple of nights, this is luxury. This is the Ritz of Bogs. Yeah, this is the, the Roosevelt of Bogs. <laughs> it has its own cabana. Being very and gingy with this one. Right. So I told now you. I'm going to come around for you for this side. <laughs> and Tim? Yeah, man, that's still a fact. Yes. No, I should be right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then I'm like, and then I sort of come with it and I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, be yeah. wary though of having the eye roll back and head. Thanks. Oh, you like, like a, Oh, no, no, don't. Don't. No. Don't, because it looks like a bit like you're turning into a zombie. That's uh, the idea. That's the whole point. <laughs> Post apocalyptic. With all the shooting, our boys must know that we're out here, boy. Just stop the bombing, I mean, they have to. I think it's safe to assume they have no idea. When the bombardment starts, we'll make a run for it. We'll have a better chance of making it if we stick together.
Time you punched me. Sure. <laughs> How was that on the wire? It's in your It's bullshit. Yeah. Caught me a beauty on the first. <laughs> Bull crap. Oh, and back. Each one of them. Every fucking punch connected. Really? <laughs> oh. Does it look real? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> him down now. Just so you know, this is fake. I've done this twice. <laughs> Just another day at the office. Restricted movement because they split suit. Yeah, that's that's like oh, I'm trying to give you so you can so you can really open because you won't be able to do this kind of stuff. We really want to open your legs. Okay, so we go down. Down your knees. That's it. Now you, you want to still keep him on top and lift this leg up first. And now put him to the front slightly. That's it. Now lift the other leg up. And now that work? Much easier. Forbidden Ground is a testament to all filmmakers in this country 
and around the world. You're only limited by your own attitude. I'm proud of my barbed wire field. You probably can't see it in this light. It's a very nasty piece of work. You like it? I don't recall you ever interviewing me, James. Well, uh, you... well, do you have anything to say? No, no, not really. Better do it then. Oh well. Bye. See ya.